Chapter 13 Smoke The next day dawned swelteringly hot. All four woke slick with sweat, with dragonflies trying to drink from their skin. For breakfast, Con found a banana tree, and they made a sack from Max's jumper and filled it until bananas poked out of the neck. They gorged on unripe bananas until Max was sick on his own shoes. After breakfast, a wind began to pick up. It was a very welcome breeze on Fred's face as he prepared the raft, double-checking every knot. It was the same wind that nearly killed them. Fred and Leela were crouched on the raft in the river, testing how it moved under their weight and retying vines. Con and Max were hunting for berries to add to their provisions. The back was half in, half out of Leela's pocket, sniffing the breeze. A swirl of air reached them from the jungle, and Baka let out a mew. A shiver passed down Fred's spine. Does something smell odd to you? Baka seemed nervous. He began trying to bite Leela's hem into ribbons. Leela stared back towards the path to the clearing. Where they should have been shards of green sunlight, there was a swirl of grey. Is that dust? It's smoke, said Fred. He sniffed again. It's a fire. For a moment they both stared at the billowing grey, paralysed. Then Leela let out a scream, and the scream shook the whole raft. Max! Where's Max? He was right there on the bank with Con. The smoke began to follow, flow like water, sweeping out of the trees towards them. Fred's eyes stung. There was a pounding of feet, and Con came, sprinting out of the bushes, her hair flying behind her, catching in the trees. She dived, half fell into the river and swam, splashing frantically towards the raft. I saw it, she cried, hauling herself up over the edge. The clearing's on fire. It's horrible. Her eyes were red and wild. She stared around. Where's Max? I thought he was with you. Leah's face was unrec unrecognisable. What? No, he said he was going to find you. He wanted to play with Baka. No, this can't be happening. Leah stood up on the raft. Max! Max! shouted Fred. Max! I'm here. The voice was tiny and thin and sounded of pure panic. Max had scrambled up a tree. He was sitting, whimpering, unable to scream in the branches overhanging the river. Frere stared up, stared up at him, divided between shock and terror. How did he get up there? said Con. It's so high. Jump in, Max. Jump into the water, called Leela. I can't. Max, I'm ordering you. Her voice was shrill, wire thin. I'm your big sister, and you do what I say. Max's voice was a shriek. I can't! He started crying in long, wordless wails, balanced above the river. Fred began pulling off his boots, but Leela thrust back her at Con and was in the water. Fred had never seen a human swim so fast. She scrambled up the bank, her nails tearing against the mud, and sprinted up the tree. She began climbing, hauling herself up with just her arms, where the footholds failed. Max, she called, just stay there. Fred and Con sat on the raft below, Con holding back in both hands, watching, coughing as the smoke thickened around them. Max was crouching like a sloth, with his arms and legs wrapped around the branch. Fred squinted up to see Leela crawling on the branch, talking to him, coaxing him, trying to untangle him, her body shaking as she moved. Max had stopped crying and was now rig rigid faced and completely silent which was somehow more frightening than the screaming. The first flames appeared, snaking along the path from the clearing. The heat sent up sparks, catching at Leela's skin and Max's seat. There was a bang, like an erupting paper bag, as below the, them seed pods exploded in the heat. Jump in! Fred shouted wildly. Just jump in, and we'll come and get you! There was only smoke now. Smoke and the sound of Leela calling to Max, singing to him, coaxing him desperately. Jump! Street Con, please now! Then two bodies plummeted down into the river. The water closed over them. They landed in an eddy of water and the current swept the two of them too fast into the middle of the river where there were rapids. Fred squinted through the smoke. Their heads did not resurface. Take the pole, he said to Con. He took a deep breath. And if we die, tell my dad, sorry. He dived head first into the brown water and struck out towards the rapids. Fred opened his eyes, but all he could see was churning foam. A body smashed into his and he grabbed it. It was Max. He tried, 
through his panic to remember what he had read about saving people from drowning. You had to gently cup their chin in your hand. He remembered that clearly. But how? The current was too fast to make cupping of any kind seem plausible. Fred spun onto his back and hauled Max up to lie on his stomach, trying to keep the boy's head out of the water. He couldn't tell if Max was breathing. With one arm, he began to swim backwards towards the bank. The water was trying to pull them under. He could see only smoke and spray in the river sweeping over his face with every stroke. Don't panic, whispered to himself. This will be a bad moment to panic. A burning branch fell into the water inches away from them. Max gave a cough and spat out a water beetle, hacking weakly as the river washed over them again. Just as Fred was starting to feel that panicking was really the only available option, he saw something in the smoke. A yell came over the sound of the fire and the water in his ears. Fred! Max! It was Con. Over here, he called. Swim towards me, she screamed. I can't. The current! It was bitterly hard work staying in one place. One of his legs was starting to cramp and he was terrified that Max's head would go under the water. A shape came out of the smoke. It was the raft. Con was covered in grey ash. She was paddling hard with both hands, roaring the name as she came. She reached Fred just as he hit a swirl in the current. There was a painful cracking as his ear smashed against the wood and a scream from Con, a great scrambling and a burning in his muscles. But then Fred was kneeling on the raft, coughing up, coughing up water, and Max was there, spitting and vomiting up water and leaves and banana. Where's Leela? said Con. Her voice was wild and high. Where's Leela? I couldn't see her. Fred choked out a mouthful of water and crawled to the edge of the raft. He tried to draw in a deep enough breath to dive in again, but each gasp for air made him gag. There was a great lurch as they tipped sideways. Two hands appeared, then Leela's face, her chin on the end of the raft. Leela! Fred let out a noise he hadn't known he was capable of, something between a roar and a whoop, and grabbed her wrists, then her shoulders, heaving her to the centre of the raft. She lay panting. She had a cut across the bridge of her nose, and blood ran down over her mouth and chin. Butch was alive. Ma Max, she gasped. He's here. He's fine, Con was shouting, though her face was very close to Leela's. Just breathe. He's fine, I swear. She pushed with the pole, thrusting the raft to the side of the river where the current flowed steadily, propelling them away from the flames. At last, when the air was clear and the fire, was, fire cackling in the distance, she guided the raft into the shallows where it stilled, swaying on the water. A crowd of blue butterflies alighted on the bank next to them. Max was wearing pondweed on his head like a tiara. Leela cradled him in her arms. He cradled back her. Back her cradled Max's son. It was a long time before anyone spoke. What happens now? said Leela. Do we go back? I don't know. Everything was burnt, said Con. She was still shivering with shock, and although the sun was warm, the hairs along her arms were standing on it. I saw it. The den and the bees. Everything. The whole clearing. Con wiped the ash from her face. She looked like a panda bear. It was our fire. We should have left somebody to watch it. The embers were too hot. Fred spoke quietly. So we follow the map. Wait, wasn't the map in your pocket? Asked Leela. I swamped Fred's gut. Oh, he said. Oh, no. He reached into his pocket and fished out the red leather pouch. The ink on the map had run so badly that it was no more than a blackish smudge. The paper itself was pulp, and as he passed it to Leela, it tore in two. He swallowed. Sorry, he whispered. Leela looked as though she might cry. Don't be, she said. There was an impatient tut behind them, a sort of cough and the sound of scratching. You're both so defeatist, said Con. She had pulled a flint from her pocket, and as they watched, she tore a strip of bark from the raft and began etching something on it. There, that was the squiggle, and that was where the river curved, she said. Your photogenic memory, said Max. Photographic, said Con. She kept scratching. There, she said. What do you think? Does that look right? Fred studied her map. It does look almost exactly. Uh, not almost exactly. Exactly, said Con sharply. I was just being polite, actually. I know it's right. 
Alfred looked at the bark and then up at Leela, at Max at Con. Whatever it is that's on that map, it's got to be better than what's back there. What do you say? That same feeling, fear and hope. And something that felt like what his father called sheer bloody mindedness began to churn inside his stomach. Con bit a lip. Then without a word, she took up the pole again and pushed a raft on the bank, back into the river and a corridor of dappled green light. Left at the next fork, she added. Left at the next fork, said Leela. They coasted onwards for that whole day. Some of the tributaries were only eight feet across, with a cathedral roof of branches above them creating a midnight darkness. Others were so wide and bright it was hard to see the opposite shore. As the sky grew pink, Fred turned and saw on the far bank a caiman as big as a great dame. It lay in the mud, its eyes at half-mast, staring straight ahead, his heart clenched. What do we do? hissed Con. She spoke without moving a single muscle in her face. Nothing, said Leela. Fred held the pole in his hand like a spear, but the caiman didn't move as they floated past. The sun dipped lower over the river ahead of them. The light grew purplish and thin. Fred could no longer see beneath the surface of the water. We're not safe, are we? asked Con. No, said Fred, but we could pretend we are. Leela tightened her grip on Backer's paw. Let's act, act as if the river's on our side. Let's act as if the jungle wants us to win. The stars began to come out, casting the water deep black under a silver flecked sky. Even if rivers don't take sides, even then. <laughs>